Okay, so we want to integrate uh, x arc sine of x. Now before we do this, uh, we need to start with a triangle here. Whenever you see some sort of trigonometric function, whether it's sine, cosine, tangent, or even arc sine or arc tangent, uh, we want to remember that this is all part of a triangle here. So arc sine of x, remember that's an angle right there. Uh, arc sine of x corresponds to is the inverse of sine theta. So arc sine of x is equal to theta, and so sine of theta is equal to x. Or in this case, because we're talking about a triangle, x over 1. Because remember, sine, all trigonometric functions like this, are a ratio of, of sides of a right triangle. And that triangle looks a little something like this. So if we take our just an arbitrary right triangle with our angle theta. And in this case, we've got arc sine of x, so which implies sine of theta is equal to x over 1, and that's opposite over hypotenuse, so our opposite side will be x. The hypotenuse will be 1, and this implies by Pythagorean's theorem that this other side, the adjacent side, will be 1 minus x squared. And that is going to come in handy in a moment, because what we're going to do is we're going to take this integral and, and do a, a substitution and see what happens. So I suggest, actually, let's substitute I'm going to say, hey, theta is equal to arc sine of x. Now, to finish the substitution, we want to take the derivative of that. So d theta dx is equal to, let's see, this is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we solve for dx, we see that dx is equal to the square root of 1 minus, oh, excuse me, dx is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared times d theta. Well, this is the first time we're going to refer back to, or maybe the second time, I guess, refer back to this triangle here. And we notice that 1 minus the square root of x, according to this triangle, is also equal to cosine of theta. So that dx is actually equal to cosine of theta, d theta. And by that same reasoning, so we still need to finish the substitution. So if theta is equal to arc sine of x, then x remember, is just equal to the sine of theta. So the full substitution for our integral is going to be uh, x, which is sine theta. Actually, I'll start with arc sine of x, which is theta, times x, which is sine of theta, times dx, which we found to be cosine theta, d theta. So that is our integral after the first substitution. Now, the next step I would recommend would be integration by parts. And the way I would divide this up is I would say, um, I'd say u, I'd call theta u. And I would call this whole thing sine theta cosine theta v prime. And I'll show you why just a moment here. So we've got u is equal to theta, u prime is equal to 1. Uh, in this case we have v prime is equal to sine theta cosine theta. And so v, now this is actually an integral in and of itself, v is going to be the integral of sine theta cosine theta, d theta. Now this one's actually pretty straightforward, and we're going to do another substitution here, and say, let's, uh, let's say a 
is equal to sine theta. That means dA d theta is equal to cosine theta, which means that d theta is equal to dA over cosine theta. And if we make this substitution, so sine theta is equal to A, and d theta is equal to dA over cosine theta. And so that's actually going to cause these the two cosines to cancel out. And so this becomes V is equal to just the integral of A dA, which is pretty straightforward, which means that V, so if we do this integration here, this becomes 1 half A squared. And if we resubstitute for A, we find that this is equal to um, 1 half sine squared theta. Okay, so moving on, uh, there are a lot of steps to this, but it's, uh, it's actually not too bad once we have it down. So let's move on. Let's uh, finish our integration by parts here. And if we remember what integration by parts looks like, uh, the integration of u v prime is equal to u times v minus the integral of u prime times v. <clears throat> well, we have all of these parts from the last page. We've got u is theta, u prime is 1, uh, we've got v prime is sine theta cosine theta, and we've got v is equal to 1 half sine theta squared. So if we plug all of that in here, we get the integral of theta sine theta, cosine theta, d theta is equal to, what do we have here, uv, which is going to be theta times one half sine squared theta minus the integral of u prime v which is really just, remember, u prime is just 1, so this is just the integral of v, which is the integral of 1 half sine squared theta d theta. Now, if we, to, now we still need to integrate this right here, but this is pretty straightforward. And let me clean this term up here real quick. So this is, or this whole expression, 1 half theta sine squared theta minus 1 half uh, sine squared, the integral of sine squared theta d theta. Now remember the transformation, uh, if you want to convert sine squared theta into just uh, a, a simple trig function, specifically cosine. Let's get there in a sec. Remember this whole thing, sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. Now if we keep going here and we simplify this, this is still, this term's still the same here. And I'm going to pull out the, uh, this one half here, so this becomes one fourth. Uh, the integral of one, d theta, um, plus one fourth the integral of cosine 2 theta d theta. Well, this is pretty straightforward here. This is, again, this is still the same, the same term. Uh, the integral of 1 is just theta. And the integral of 
cosine two theta is going to be one half the sine of two theta. So this whole term becomes one eighth times the sine of two theta. Now, one more thing we have to do here to, to get this back into what we want in terms of theta, we need to remember that sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to 2 times sine theta cosine theta. That's a, one of those trig identities that's good to, good to remember. So if we finish this off here, this is theta sine squared theta minus 1 fourth theta plus 1 eighth, like I said, times 2 sine theta cosine theta. So this becomes 1 fourth sine theta cosine theta. Now what we can do is we can go back to our original substitution. Remember theta is equal to arc sine of x sine of theta is equal to x and we've got a couple others in here. We've got cosine theta. Uh, cosine theta is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and plug everything back in. We are essentially done at this point, after this point here at least. So uh, 1 half theta which is arc sine of x sine of x is just equal, sine of theta is just equal to x, so that means that sine squared of theta is just equal to x squared minus one fourth theta is equal to arc sine of x, and then plus one fourth sine of theta is just equal to x, and cosine theta is equal to one minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we can combine all this together, how can we do that here? Let's see. Well, maybe if we factor out a 1 fourth from this entire expression here, we'll get a 1 fourth. And let's look at these arc sine terms. We have this x squared and we have this 1. So this is actually going to be equal to 2x squared minus 1 times arc sine of x and then plus x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And of course I've left it out up to this point but we can never forget our plus c. That should be right. Do let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.